Hello and welcome to an almost getting ready to rain day in Thailand. I'm kicking off a new project because of the debacle of the JevQ not reading current values worth a damn. I've decided to uh, kick off a project that will read DC current on a wire and output the value as CAN bus data which can be read by any device sitting on the CAN bus wire in your project. The goal is to make it really small and really cheap and really absolute dead easy functionality of the which the JevQ is none. So uh, I hate having to go to this extent, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to walk you through what I've come up with so far in the design. But basically, it's going to look like this. I found this product on Alibaba. It's a 50 amp current sensor on a little tiny circuit board. It's cheap. Uh, and the only thing it's missing is it doesn't output CAN bus data. It outputs an analog value from zero to some number of volts and from that your the rest of your system is supposed to figure out what current value going through the wire is represented by that tiny little output voltage it sounds a lot like what the JevQ was doing for me with the shunt but uh, in a more nicely packaged independent kind of a system so what we need to do is basically take this idea and add CAN bus to it and then in the middle of that, we need some magic to happen in the form of a little computer chip that will read the analog value, calculate the uh, actual current associated with that, and then write out a packet on the CAN bus representing the, the current in hundreds of an amp, hopefully, as a digital value. Now, there are generally three different ways that you can measure current. One is with a shunt, like I've explained previously, the way the JevQ does it, which to me is a little dodgy. Uh, the, the accuracy is not great because you're dealing with millivolts of a signal that you're trying to read accurately and predictably. Then you have what's called Hall Effect devices, which consist of a, a magnetic donut you put your wire through it, and through the magic of electromagnetism, uh, you can figure out how much current is flowing through. And you see this device from a company called LEM, which makes fantastic uh, current sensing devices. This puppy's $169, and it does put out CAN bus. So that's lovely, but I'm not going to drop $169 on this thing. I'm going to take all my free time and have a go at making my own design. And then the third way you can measure current is with this little chip guy. And basically in something that's the size of a, a little tiny SD micro memory card, it uses the magnetic field property to read current in the same kind of way uh, that the big one does but it's all packaged in a nice tiny little IC and when you're measuring current this way tiny is good because all the components can be very very close to each other which lessens um, errors that get included with signal loss and noise interference from other things going on so the the chip on the the little alibaba board is exactly this style and that's what i'm going to pick and that's what i'm moving forward with on the design so basically what i'm trying to do is put the alibaba board together with something like this which is called the sami c2 board that contains a microcontroller and a can bus driver chip so if you magically stick those together you've got pretty much the thing i'm looking at so what I want to do is take the best ideas from both of these devices, build my own custom circuit board, and write a little software and make it work. So let's uh, walk through the high-level design 
and uh, iterate over that design and then figure out exactly how we're going to pull this off. Okay, here we are. I'm going to take you through four levels of the design. If you think about looking at the Earth, let's look at it from space, and then we'll zoom down and we can see continents, and then we'll zoom down and we can see cities, and we'll zoom down and we can see streets and people. So that helps us iterate through the design, make decisions, and figure out what we want for the next level. So what we're looking at right now, I call the project level. The project level just says, what do I want this thing to do at the end of the day? I want it to output a DC amps reading on the CAN bus wire, and we're going to have the input wire come in here, and we're going to have the output wire go there. That's good. That's exactly what we want it to do. That's the only thing we want it to do. And everything that's going to make that happen is inside this blue box. So let's go down another level. Okay, so now we're at the functional level. We're going to define the functions that need to happen inside the, the big box that's going to make this project work for us. So at the top, we know we need something that's going to sense current and put out some kind of a raw value. So I've drawn a little box. Our input wire comes in here to the sensor, it goes out here to the output wire, and it's going to emit some kind of a signal. Now down at the bottom, let's jump down here, we know we need some kind of a CAN bus device that's going to take some value and write it out onto the CAN bus wire for us. Okay, and what is in the middle? Let's just call that magic for now. We're going to put a box in here called magic that reads the sensor value does some manipulation of that data, and then writes the value to the CAN bus device, which actually drives the CAN bus wire signals to make our reading available to the rest of the devices on the CAN bus. So we're a little closer to our goal, but you might admit we're still a little bit far away, so let's jump down to the next level. Okay, now we're at the block level. We're zooming down more fleshing out the design. So we're back to our current sensor, but we know it's going to need some support components. So I have just kind of put that in the box, but that hasn't changed very much. Now you can see I've changed magic to microcontroller with CAN bus. So this is a, an expected box to be filled in. We're going to have a CPU chip that's uh, designed as a microcontroller, which means it has lots of analog and digital input and output pins, and they usually contain other types of functions. And we need one that has uh, that understands CAN bus uh, on board. Now, CAN bus in um, in an industrial kind of uh, automated setting like this is usually broken into two pieces. The microcontroller has some CAN bus. Uh, capability on board, but it needs an external CAN bus driver chip because this chip has to deal with uh, different voltage levels. It's really driving a lot of power onto the wire, so it has a, its own job to do, but the, the microcontroller knows it's going to be paired up with one of these driver chips, so this normally happens in the world of CAN bus. Now, if we jump over here, we know we're going to be talking uh, to the USB bus because we need a way to connect a computer to program the microcontroller with the function that it's going to perform. We're going to write some code on the laptop. We're going to download it over the USB connector into the microcontroller. We're also going to be doing some debugging here. It's going to be writing out debug statements. so. This is going to come in handy when we're writing the code to make this all work. In addition, if it comes to pass, and I'm hoping it doesn't, that the end user, me, or maybe somebody else, if they, they choose to, to get one of these boards after I've, I'm happy with it, if they need to do some calibration, like we saw Jack made us all do in the JevQ, they're going to need to hook their device up through the USB bus and perform the calibration functions that I will include in the code that I load into the microcontroller. 
uh, and the, the CAN bus. I talked about the CAN bus chip. Now the CAN bus chip knows there's two wires. There's the high wire and the low wire, and it's going to be handling two CAN bus messages. One will be an input message that will come off the wire through the driver and into my code through a, an interrupt kind of a system. And it's going to say, please give me your current DC amp reading. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to take a snapshot of the DC current I see flowing through. I'm going to package it up into a nice CAN bus packet. I'm going to write it out through the driver and we're going to output a DC amps reading CAN bus packet. So we know we need to handle two packets. Now to make all this stuff work, we need a power supply. So I'm going to be providing uh, or I'm going to require that the user, me or somebody else, provides 12 volts in ground, which will come into this power supply. The power supply will then feed the current sensor, the microcontroller, the CAN bus, and the USB. I, I don't have the wiring for that. But the USB handling system will also need some kind of power. As we drill down into the next level, we'll see with the components that I select, we'll see what voltage is required. Hopefully, they will all be able to run off the same voltage, makes the power supply simpler. If I've got one that needs, say, 5 volts and another one that needs 3.3 volts, makes life more difficult, but the power supply box is meant to handle that. Okay, let's jump down to the next level. Okay, we're now at the lowest level I'm going to walk you through today, the component level. You can see we have a couple more boxes and a lot more wires, and we're starting to see components that I'm actually going to purchase on the market and solder into the board. So let's walk through. Our input wire comes to a screw terminal, and I'm, I found something very, very similar to that Alibaba board that I showed you earlier, screw terminal for in and out. And I've chosen as our current sensor the ACS770 chip, which looks like this, and its support components, and it just needs a couple of little tiny capacitors. This is very cool because you can see it uses the magnetic field concept, but inside the chip. It's, I think it's a, a genius piece of engineering. The signal out of the ACS770 will be read by a, an MCU from Microchips Incorporated, with the sexy name AT-SAM-C21E18A. And what this is, is a an MCU with built-in CAN bus, and the that's this family right here, and it's got the most amount of um, program space, saved variable space, and RAM in the family. And it costs something ridiculous, like $3.62. So I'm very, very happy with that chip. I'm also adding a debug connector. There's a, a device that's put out by uh, microchips, which used to be called Atmel, but they purchased them. And it's a real-time debugging system. Now, back in high school, I used a real-time debugging system from Intel the box was a, an entire computer the size of a suitcase. This thing is the size of a two and a half inch hard disk. It's just magnificent. So this will help me capture real time data as my program is flowing through the MCU. Now, the, I've paired the SAM C21 up with another microchips uh, chip called an ATA6560. This is the CAN bus transceiver that actually drives the signal onto the wire. These were made for each other. It's a match made in heaven. It's perfect. For the USB chip, I've chosen a CP2102N, and that handles the USB in and out uh, on the board. There's a micro USB connector that gets soldered on here that the user connects into to load the program to see the output uh, and this should all work seamlessly. 
luckily, all of these devices I chose to run off a 5 volt power supply. So I only need a very straightforward 12 volt to 5 volt power supply, which basically consists of one chip and a couple of capacitors for smoothing and noise isolation. So this is very, very, very simple. And it puts out an amp at 5 volts, which is more than enough to supply all these components. The last thing we're looking at is a 4-pin screw terminal that will take the plus 12 and ground wires and the CAN bus high and low wires. And this is basically it. There's a, a tiny amount of extra uh, components that go on here. I'm going to have a couple of LEDs that show the power supply is working. There's going to be one that shows the CAN bus data is coming in and out. There's going to be one showing USB data is going in and out. They'll blink nicely. There's going to be a little reset button. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So I've got a lot of this stuff ordered. It's going to take a couple of weeks for it to all start flowing in. Um, and the next video will be laying out the circuit board for this, which is a very cool thing. I did circuit boards back when I was in high school on a light table, which was a piece of glass, and I used very, very thin rolls of black tape and an X-Acto knife to lay these circuit boards out. This is going to be a breeze. So I'm really looking forward to doing this in CAD on my laptop, uh, automatically generating the schematic and the circuit board layout, tweak it a little bit, send the design off to China. It comes back in a week for $3 and then um, start soldering components on and writing the code and making this work. I am so looking forward to this. So. Join me in the next video when I get to start that process. As you stare out on my beach, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel and click like on this video so YouTube thinks I'm worthy again. And I have so many people on my channel that they'll give me 10 cents a day in ad revenue. So I thank you for that.